Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, sir, for Chris. This is great. Wonderful. This is, as a start, for starters, Chris. You are too kind. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the fantastic Chris Berg. Now, yeah, folks, uh, <clears throat> uh, and thanks also to the other speakers today. They've done a remarkable job. I think uh, let's have a, a, a round of thunderous applause for all the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are many freedoms, there are many of our freedoms that are under attack and uh, this, this seminar appears to have been a success and if it, if it has been we'll have more, we'll have more and we'll keep in touch with you by email about uh, what the further plans are. <clears throat> now one of the aims of the conference of course was to explain why Australians are so attached to freedom of speech and why we reject threats to these freedoms and also to define the freedoms themselves and to resolve any conflicts that may may develop from time to time. Personally though I feel that our strong defence of, uh, <clears throat> of free speech rests on three beliefs. <coughs> Firstly many Australians believe that it is our right and our responsibility to decide what we read and what we watch and what we absorb. We might go and seek advice from other trusted observers and, and uh, advisors, but it's still for us to decide. And as a matter of fact, <coughs> we might even be offended or pissed off if we think that other people can make these choices for us. The second reason is that for good reason we have a highly developed sense of cynicism about government powers over such matters, that they should decide what we watch. And we have tremendous confidence in the ability of governments to become corrupted into thinking that it will be their stuff that we should watch. If government is filtering out all most of our options, what's left for us to select as our range of spectrum of choices? The third belief is simply that the competition of ideas and information, <clears throat> just like the provision of goods and services, will ultimately re reward those who offer a truth truthful and quality product. Some of the stuff served up might be nonsense. But again, through competition and a range of alternatives, we can choose for ourselves which information to take on board. Our strong defence of free speech does not put us under any pressure to defend those ideas, whatever they may be. Exactly the same way as we've learnt to believe that our, we don't believe everything we see from advertisements. We've, we're smart enough to do that, well we're smart enough to choose what we watch. Uh, in conclusion, again, a personal observation is that I understand being a very broad-minded and tolerant type of person that not everybody in every country of the world fully understands or accepts our strong commitment to free speech. And that's a fact. But it is in, in our own self-interest to, as we did today, with the help of these magnificent speakers and a magnificently responsive audience, thank you very much, we've learnt today how by eloquently expressing the, the, the benefits of free speech, uh, and we must continue this laborious task of explaining to the world the value and importance of maintaining free speech as a way of developing the kinds of societies that respect individuals, the kinds of societies in which we choose to live. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>